Steph, uh, just packing up. Yeah, you've been acting really weird over the last couple days. What's going on? So, I'm not really quite sure how to say this, but uh, found out today that I have upper cross syndrome, and uh, it's pretty bad. Doc says it's one of the worst cases he's ever seen in his life. But why does that mean you have to leave? Steph, the amount of time that I'm going to have to be spending on fixing my shit is honestly so much that you deserve someone who can dedicate more time to you. So, I'm leaving. Well, first of all, you do know that upper cross syndrome, though it has the word syndrome, is a lot scarier sounding than it really is. Two, that it's more so a label for things like poor posture and muscle imbalances that, three, we know now are pretty poorly correlated with things like a pain experience. So, you mean there's hope for me to kind of overcome this? I got some ideas. Hmm. Okay. Maybe that was just a touch dramatic. But you get the point. We know now more than ever just how important the words we use are when we're educating our clients. And we have a lot of hard science and research to back this up. Imagine walking in as a patient with a little bit of neck pain and leaving with upper cross syndrome. Or imagine walking in with a little bit of knee pain and leaving with patellofemoral pain syndrome. We really need to ask ourselves, does telling the patients these diagnoses really change the way that we're gonna ultimately manage this? We would argue that it ultimately only adds unnecessary fear-mongering narratives and potentially instills some maladaptive beliefs into the clients we're working with. So we ask, reflect. Be mindful of the narratives you're providing your patients because now we know better, so it's time to do better. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and we'd be glad to chat.